Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Airbnb stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Airbnb is a vacation rental online marketplace. Customers can use its services through its website or app. Users can arrange lodging, primary homestays, and tourism experiences. Also, people can list their properties on its website to rent out. Airbnb does not own any of the listed properties. Instead, it profits by receiving commission from each booking. The company was founded in 2008. Airbnb is a shortened version of its original name, airbedandbreakfast.com. The company has attracted criticism for increasing rent prices in cities where it operates and creating problems for those living near leased properties. It's also faced challenges with the hotel industry. On December 10th, the company IPO'd with a valuation over $100 billion. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 83 billion market cap. They're trading at 139 a share and they have 602 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they have positive free cash flow in three of the four years. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they have negative net income every single year. Revenue is a sales for the company. It increased about $1 billion each year from 2017 to 2019, but then dropped in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue. Below that is cost of revenue. These are the expenses that are directly tied to generating the revenue. The difference between those two numbers is the gross profit. That was $2.7 billion in the trailing 12 months. In 2019, it was $3.6 billion, their highest gross profit. They have high operating expenses, so they have negative operating income in three of the four years. Only in 2018, they have positive operating income. Then they have to pay interest on their debt, and they have quite a bit of other expenses, $280 million. This amount is due to acquisitions and restructurings. So they have negative net income in every single year. They had the biggest negative in the trailing 12 months, negative $1 billion. It can be difficult looking at the income statement to try to understand how the company's doing. That's why a statement of cash flows, I think, is a better indicator of a company's health. Operating cash flow takes net income and then adjusts for the non-cash items on the income statement. So you can see the company had positive operating cash flow in 2017, 18, and 19. They did have negative in the trailing 12 months. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. They had negative $742 million of free cash flow in the past 12 months, but they did have positive free cash flow in the three years before that. So in 2017, 18, and 19, the company only issued $15 million of stock and $11 million of debt. The reason they didn't issue that much debt is because they had positive operating cash flow. They were able to run their business using the operating cash flow, which is the ideal situation. Let's look at a capital structure, negative $800 million of equity. That means their liabilities are greater than their assets on their balance sheet, and they have $419 million of debt, but negative $2.6 billion of net debt. Net debt is total debt minus cash, so they have enough cash in their balance sheet to pay down all their debt. Their weighted average cost of capital is 8%, and that's a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $30 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $25 billion. We divide that by 600 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $42. They're trading at $139, so they're trading at a 228% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply, Wall Street values the company at $69, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. The idea for the company came about in 2007 when two roommates, Brian Chesky and Joe Gebbia, came up with the idea of putting an air mattress in their living room and turning it into a bed and breakfast. Then a third friend came into the picture and they named the company Air Bed and Breakfast. They put up a website and offered short-term living quarters for people who were unable to find hotel rooms. The company received training and funding from Y Combinator. 
By March 2009, the site had 10,000 users and 2,500 listings. In that same month, they shortened the name to Airbnb.com. In January 2009, it received $20,000 from Y Combinator. They received $600,000 from Sequoia Capital. Then they received $7.2 million from Greylock Partners and Sequoia Capital. They raised $112 million in 2011, then another $450 million in 2014, then $1.5 billion in 2015. They raised the most amount this month, the $100 billion IPO. In 2011, Airbnb acquired a German company. This helped them start their first international office in Hamburg, Germany. In 2012, they acquired a London-based company. In 2012, they acquired Nabewise. This helped them reach customers who were traveling that were looking for lodging. For $300 million, the company acquired a Canadian-based villa rental company. In March 2019, the company acquired Hotel Tonight for $400 million. This is a website for booking last-minute hotel rooms. In 2019, the company acquired Urban Door. This company offers extended stays to corporate clients. Airbnb also received discrimination complaints. Clients whose names suggested they were black had more difficulty booking rooms. A similar complaint in China against the Uyghurs. The average age of the leadership team is 53 years and the average tenure is 3 years. We don't have any salary information since the company recently went public. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 12.6, the median is 14.8. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. Since they have negative net income, they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 23.1. So investors are paying $23 for $1 revenue. That's much worse than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They have negative equity, so they have negative price to book. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. Their tangible equity is negative $1.5 billion, so they have about $700 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income and negative equity, so we can't look at ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.3, so they can cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are $3 billion of cash, $3.1 billion of receivables, and $341 million of prepaid assets. The company has negative $743 million of free cash flow, but they do have $1.3 billion of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Spotify, Facebook, Alphabet, Groupon, Match, Pinterest, Trivago, Twitter, Yelp, and Yandex. All in the same industry as Airbnb. And if Airbnb has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE. Their price to sales is worse than the average. A terrible price to book, so they're worse. Their current ratio is fine, even though it's worse than the average. They don't have an ROE, they're 100% debt, and their market cap is $83 billion, which is lower than average. So they're worse in every single category. To summarize, I have them trading at a significant premium because their stock price is so much higher than where it should be. But investors get excited with IPOs, so they drive the price higher and higher, but eventually it should come down in price. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.